I think I figured out. I think I figured out Duke. Last night, Dennis, you were in attendance. We were texting back and forth. I was there. Your uh, your text may have, may have spurred some of this. I think I figured out Duke. I've been looking not for the wrong thing, but I've been looking in the wrong place. All year. If you, if you listen to this show, first of all, thank you. Second of all, I've been asking Duke for edge, right? That, that attitude. They need a killer instinct, right? Whatever words you use to describe it, Duke has needed it. They haven't had it. I've been screaming for Filipowski. I've been screaming for John Shire. I wanted John Shire to get a tech. I wanted John Shire to yell. I thought he had some opportunities last night, by the way. Uh, he did show a little bit he, of fire in edge little, yesterday. A little bit of fire. There were a couple calls. Those referees were oh. a story in and of themselves. And and I think a few times Shire could have let him have it. But, but again, I think I was looking for the right thing, but in the wrong place. I wanted to see Tyrese Proctor. I thought Tyrese Proctor could be the attitude and the driving force and the edge for that team. I think they have to firmly change who is their tone setters. If it's Jared McCain and Mark Mitchell, it's Jared McCain and it's Mark Mitchell. I'm done waiting for Kyle Filipowski and Tyrese Proctor to take the metaphorical bull by the horns and be the the, the attitude of that team. Jared McCain and Mark Mitchell, they look comfortable wearing that, that role. And that is almost as important as taking the role, is being comfortable in it, right? Being just a natural part of your personality. Here's Jared McCain on why he's been such an effective rebounder over the last five games. There's two things. I mean, more, I'm more of a want, more of a want to just do it, we'll get more rebounds. Like it's something we need to do with our team since um, we don't have that huge presence sometimes. Um, and then also, coach is letting me uh, attack the offensive rebounds, offensive glass. So that's another thing that's probably helping me a little bit more. Uh, I don't have to get back right away. I can go attack. I love that. Coach is letting me attack the offensive rebounds. Just, just the verbiage. Right? Just just the words. It wasn't how a coach is letting me, you know, mix it up down low. Coach is letting me uh hit the offense. No, attack. Jared McCain, uh, over the last five games has become a legitimate ACC rebounder. For the last five years, double digit rebounds. We're looking at a double double from the perimeter. That that to me is the personification of what I'm talking about. Right, I mean, he he brought up the term want to. Like that rebounding, and you can go back to eight eight year old basketball. Rebounding is effort and want. It's will and determination. That's what rebounding is. Outside of the savants, like like Dennis Rodman, you can go find some clips of him. Like hey, grab the rebound. Outside of the savants, who, who literally know which kind of shots shooters miss and get in position, it's just about want and will and want to. And then there's Mark Mitchell. The Blue Devils, this is a stat that's been passed around social media a bunch, are 29-3 and three in games where Mark Mitchell scores at least 10 points. 29-3, and three, obviously over the last two seasons, when Mark Mitchell scores at least 10 points. I'm letting the guy attack offensively. And he and you can see it, right? It's 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 dunks, it's it's posturing, you can see it in his body language. It's a different beast when he does it versus when Filipowski does it. Filipowski can be a stats guy. He can't be the driving tone setter of your team. I said there's an aggressiveness with Mitchell when he goes to the when he goes hard in the paint, there's an aggressive aggressiveness. When he goes hard in the paint. I mean it's it's block shots, it's it's you know, his fouls come with a little extra juice. If it's Jared McCain and it's Mark Mark Mitchell, it's Jared McCain and it's Mark Mitchell. I'm not going to look towards – and by the way, you know, I've talked about the, the Kawhi Leonard theory in the past. You can be the best player on your team statistically and not be the tone setter. Kawhi Leonard has been the best player on multiple NBA championship teams that somebody else was the tone setter for. Right when he was in in San Antonio, the tone setter, obviously Tim Duncan, obviously Tony Parker, those guys. When he was in in Toronto, he won an NBA championship. He was the best player. Kyle Lowry, Marcus Saul, those were the tone setters. Kyle Filipowski can still be Kyle Filipowski as far as go get me twenty three and ten, but he's not going to be the guy who gets a bucket down low and ignites the crowd. He's the guy who gets a bucket down low and everyone's kind of chill about it, <laughs> which it's still two points. And here's the thing. That's okay. And 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 
I was looking for him to be the energy, to be the guy that ignites the crowd. It might just not be in his personality. That's fair. And if it's in McCain, like uh, I'll use a, a like kind of a, a back to back here. We're gonna get more to Filipowski, but I'm gonna use kind of a back to back here. Uh, Jared McCain came down. Uh, it was transition, right? Good defensive stop. Ball's moving. Uh, he has the ball on the left wing. Pulls up for a three. Knocks it down. It, it, and and it was a moment where the crowd got into it. Two or three minutes later, I don't know how it was, how long ago it was, but it was close enough that I I compared the two in my brain unintentionally. Tyrese Proctor in a half court has it on the left wing. It felt like he was doing anyone you can do, I can do better style thing. Pulled up deep from three, clanked it off the 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 uh, the side of the the rim, and it was no good. And and it just it was different. It was the confidence of it. It was the I'm about to take the roof off this place of it. It it was the body language of it. If it's McCain and it's Mitchell, it's McCain and it's Mitchell. And I'll put my hand up on this one. Maybe I was trying to force square pegs into round holes, right? Maybe I was looking towards guys that that weren't ready to be the, the, the attitude enforcers, the thermostats of the locker room raising the temperature. Maybe I was looking towards the wrong spot. But now that I've seen McCain and Mitchell, now that the, I've seen the light, now I need them to be trusted with it, right? Now I need uh, you know, the, the, the coaching staff to let them attack. Now I need uh, them to understand that role, understand what they have to bring to the table. That is a heavy burden to bear. It is every game now. Every game you have to be the energy person. Every game. You know, it's it's funny because we just watched the Super Bowl, right? And and we can all say it, right? Travis Kelsey feels like somebody that if you're around him 24 hours a day, he's going to be a lot, right? All of the, you got to fight for your right. Viva Las Vegas. Like he's always got something going yeah. on, right? It feels like it would be a lot. But, but in a team atmosphere, you need the guy that's always showing up with the energy. Right, you need the guy, you know, for an early morning workout who's out there going "Viva Las Vegas." It's like, why are you doing that? Well, the Super Bowl's in Las Vegas in eight months, so I just want to sing "Viva Las." Vegas. You need that guy, and 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 that might be one of these others. And then you also need right the the player rolling their eyes at them, like just do the work. That can be someone else's role. That might be you, Tyrese Proctor. That might be you, Kyle Filipowski. Let's hear what Shire had to say about Flip Filipowski after the uh, after the game. He's a different guy, you know. Like he's um, Cal's very thoughtful, very thoughtful, and he takes the uh, pressure of the responsibility that he has for a team. And when he's not playing as well, he takes that on his shoulders. And you know, basketball is not a per- you're, you're not it's not a sport that you're supposed to be perfect in. And so for him, it's just embracing that. And he's doubled down on the work that he's put in. You know, if you saw him earlier today, he got a great workout with uh, Coach Carwell on the court uh, to really just simulate what he's going to do in the game. And uh, I thought the main thing he did, he just had a different burst to him tonight. You know, he just – I'm proud of him for that because it's not supposed to be smooth sailing all the time. Even when you come back as a sophomore, you think it's supposed to be better. Well, it's only better if you make it better. And uh, he's made it better, uh, especially tonight. Very thoughtful guy. You know who who probably hasn't been described as thoughtful very many times in his career? Somebody like Travis Kelsey. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Right? There's There's a role for the thoughtful guy. There's a role for the energy guy. There's a role for the attitude guy. I think down low it's going to be Mark Mitchell with the attitude, with the energy. I think on the perimeter it's going to be Jared McCain, and those guys have to be depended upon.